Well, look at you doing some due diligence on the weekend. Bless your heart. <laughs> Me and you got a lot in common. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of June 28th. Now, we're going to do what we always do. We're going to take a look at some hot penny stocks. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks, and you can find those on every single market. But I just don't trade penny stocks. You probably know that. I follow penny stocks. I post news on penny stocks. I post charts on them. I make videos on them. Honestly, I'm up to here with penny stocks. And I share this information with you everywhere, on Twitter, on Facebook, on my Discord group. Honestly, and I'm not saying this to boast, if you're not following me, you're missing out on a lot of information, a lot of due diligence that I don't charge for. Every morning, every day without exception, between 7.20 and 9.30, the pre-market period, I am posting every single hot penny stock I can find in those arenas I was just sharing with you. Twitter, Facebook, my Discord group. I find one piece of news, I give you the information and I post it four times. I'm looking for charts, I'm looking for FEMA filings, I'm looking for anything that looks like you should be aware of. First stock I wanna share with you is a stock that was real hot on Friday. She was running on the charts, there was lots of buzz about her on Twitter and on the Discord groups and I thought we'd take a look at it, see what all the fuss was about. Is it still worth looking at? This is New Momentum Corporation, ticker NNAX. This is a company out of Singapore. However, they are registered in Nevada, in the United States. They finished today at 0023. She was up 84% on Friday. She is on the bottom tier of the OTC, the pink, the riskiest tier because there's not a lot, if hardly any, validated information down there. You can't trust financials. Those are just tallied numbers passed off to us. News presses, yeah, take with a grain of salt. Filings, that's what I trust. Trust the filings. The only validated information you can see right up front are these two green ticks, a verified profile and a verified transfer agent. And these are done by the OTC market. This is a third party, unbiased, non-biased, that does this and that is their job. The OTC markets is actually on the OTC markets. You can invest in this company and this is their business. They make money because all of the companies actually have to pay them for putting a lot of this information up here. So what is up with NNAX? Well, let's figure out what they are first. New momentum helps customers evolve their travel business to better capitalize on the global digital and mobile movement by building new eco enterprises aided by innovative technology. The group develops new digital platforms that help to make traveling enjoyable. With gag fare, travelers can book now, pay later to secure the best fares and reserve the flights well ahead of time. New momentum is also the driving force behind a bold new hospitality concept that takes nature lovers and intrepid travelers to exciting new and established destinations. Let's get a few things out of the way here first. Why the heck did they choose the name Gag Fair? I mean, <laughs> is there a reason for it? Actually, the CEO has been getting a lot of ribbing for this, but he says that's an acronym. G-A-G -G stands for Get a Good Fair. Book now, pay later. This is the whole point here. When you go online and you buy an airline ticket and book it, you gotta pay for it right then and there, and I've done this many, many times. And one of the times I had to cancel my flight, there was no refund policy. Because of the way I bought it through this backdoor organization, I didn't get a refund and I lost the entire thing. So what they do is you get yourself your reservation and you only pay $10. And that $10 is good for one to nine people. And that holds your ticket and you pay for it about a week before you need it. And if you cancel, you only lose the $10. Well, right now they are launching a promotional offer and they've dropped it down to $2. So it's really dirt cheap. Now, right now the company is primarily working in the Pacific Asia region, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea, and they just launched over in the Philippines. Now they are working in that market primarily, believe this or not, only 20% of flights are booked online over there. Really? That surprises me. 
He literally said that 80% of the people still use travel agents or go directly to the airlines to get their tickets. So as he says the market is wide open over there for this. But they are focusing on North America because we buy and book our tickets differently than the Pacific Asian people do. We book our tickets way in advance. See here, he's talking about business travel. Most business travel is booked two weeks in advance, maybe a little more. So they don't need a lot of space, but Americans will book flights three, six, 12 months out there. And you know, things can change in three, six, 12 months, and you may have to cancel. You're going to want your money back. That could be a hassle. You may not get it back. Worst that can happen here is you just lose your reservation fee, two to 10 bucks. That's what's making them very popular. Now, if we jump over here into their most recent financial, we get some more details about the company looking at the description here. New Momentum Corporation was incorporated in the state of Nevada in 1999. And this is the sort of business they've been doing ever since then. But it's been evolving as technology has been evolving. The company, through its subsidiaries, mainly operates a smartphone application to provide the online platform with a book now, pay later flight booking service for travelers among over 500 airlines worldwide to search and secure their tickets. With a simple user-friendly interface, the company enables customers to arrange and book the multiple stop itineraries and to check their bookings through official airline websites using the gag fare booking reference numbers. The company will also become this is futuristic, right? The driving force behind a bold new hospitality concept that takes nature lovers and intrepid travelers to exciting new and established destinations. And I, they have a little information on their site. I would take you there, but it's more advertor, adv <laughs> advertising than it is informational. You get more information in their financial here. But basically, they're setting up these really cultural heritage, tightly tied in places where you can go. And that's a whole different division that they're just now getting started. So they tell us that they have subsidiaries. This is a list of those subsidiaries. And I don't have a whole lot of information about them. Nemo Holdings is their investment holdings company. There's Gag Fair. This is their travel agency. Beyond Blue Limited is their event organizer. That's that travel one we were just talking about. New Momentum Asia and then J Popcoin. Have no idea what these are. Didn't see any information to really share with you. All right. Now that you know basically what the company is about, let's take a look at that stock. So what was the relative volume around NAX on Friday? Whoa. Whoa. Darn near 10 times. That would be a thousand percent increase in her volume going from just over 19 million shares a day over the last 30 days to almost 190 million on Friday. Pretty bloody hot. Considering now, let's take a look here. I'm going to refresh this page. I'm looking over here <laughs> there again. Look at how low the share volume is on the entire OTC market, folks. Friday, we did 2.6 billion shares. Before COVID, we were doing 60 billion shares a day. And out of that 2.6 billion, they had 187 million of them. Take a look at the share structure for the company. <laughs> kind of high. We're up there at 825 million. They've got 1 billion they can put out there. They're getting close to their cap. They may be asking for more shares if they need more money. Insiders own about 145 million. We get all the rest, 681 million. Kinda high. Taking a look at the financials. All right, we got a lot of discussion here about the financials and I'll try to nutshell it for you. As I said, they've always been in the travel agency business. I find it real funny that they were making money during COVID. I mean, really, right? I thought China, Hong Kong, I thought the whole world was locked down. So it's, it's curious to me to see money there, but I guess somebody had to fly somewhere. So they did 237,000 four years ago. We're up to just near and over a million during the COVID era, and then came back down in 2023, we're down to $182,000. Quarterly, you can see it got really thin here, and all of a sudden it seems to stop. 
Now, there's some answers to this, and we're going to go over there in a minute, but let's take a look at the balance sheet first. Money in the bank. We've got three zeros. We've got to add to any of these numbers we're looking at. So if I confused you there, I'm sorry. Cash in the bank. We got about $17,000. Total assets, about $57,000. Not much there, right? Total liabilities, way up there compared to their assets, almost $650,000. So we are carrying a little over a half a million in deficit. So what I wanted to add here, let's get over into their financials. I got to scroll down here. First thing I want to let you know is that $6,000 that they made, that $6,000 for their, their revenues came from one customer. They tell us right here, for the three months ended, March 31st, ticket sales to a director in the company and family members amounted to their entire revenues. In one spot, they tell you it was a single customer that made them all that money. And they made another $11,000, $12,000. They got this from the government. They got a special deal for three tours. I don't know why, but they spent money on tours. It was about $12,000. So they used two different airlines amongst their 500, and they had about three customers. But the reason for that, the reason they weren't making very much money is they tell us down here, it is due to to the decreased transactions and ticket bookings during 2024 as the company had ceased ticket sales from September 2023 to upgrade the platform. I haven't shared this with you yet, but you're going to see it in the only piece of news we're going to look at. They have now integrated AI into their platform. And from September till just about now, they are just now launching they haven't had any business, which means they missed the very busiest time of season, the holiday season. So they didn't make any money this year. Doesn't look like uh, they have anything outside of about 18000 They tell us also that as a result of the above, during the three months ended in March, we incurred a net loss of 17500 compared to 88000 last year. <laughs> so they were losing more money when they were in business. They lost less money when they stopped doing business. But things are changing now. Anything else they got down here? Nothing else. So let's jump back here and get on over there to those disclosures. I don't think I have anything to share here with you except to say they've got a lot of financials. They get them out. They seem to have a habit of being late. You see these MT10Qs, 10Ks? That says I am not filing my quarterly and annual reports on time. Now that's okay. Filing these buys you a little bit of extra time. The 10K NT will get you five days. And no, 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 pardon me. The annual will get you 15 extra days and the quarterly will get you five extra days. Then you must have them out or you're late. Well, they're always late, but then they always seem to get them in. If you really want to know what's going on with the company, just dump into those filings like I did. They got lots of information in there, but I shared as much of it as I thought you needed to know. But I don't know what you need to know. So we've got one piece of news I need to share with you. Oh, I did want to share this since I had it up. Wanted to show you how much attention this stock was getting on Friday. Next was up 84%. She did 187 million shares and had 541 trades. I come over here to the OTC Markets current market page and I look at their advancers and they put them in order of the biggest gains so I can't change it. So the trades are over here and I got to look. Well, you can see most companies don't get a lot of trades. That's trades. That's how many trades. It doesn't matter how much volume they did. If only three people moved all that volume, it's not a hot stock. You want a lot of people trading that stock. That's what makes it hot, all the trades. So I look for stocks that have high numbers of trades. And this one today had 541 trades. Now my eyes got big. That was supposed to tell you that's a big number. That's amazing. Because as you can see, that's not normal. Honestly, we used to see stocks that had thousands of trades every day. Now we're lucky to see 10 that have over 500 so to find one that has over 500 is one you want to pay attention to. And this one was catching a lot of attention. Ooh, I like the way that rolled off my tongue. So let's go take a look at that news. Their last piece of news came out May of last year. They just had a piece of news come out on the 25th. Now that just in itself can be a catalyst. 
When you end the silence, when your spouse starts talking to you again after a long period of silence, it's a good thing. You celebrate. You're happy. You'll spend money on that occasion. So sometimes just having the company finally say something is exciting. But if they say something good, that's even better. Well, this was a news press that came out in a PDF and they didn't give us a lot of information. I mean, they do, but it's kind of repeated over and over and it's not even laid out like a news press. This is what it is. They tell us GagFair AI, the leading artificial intelligence research lab, will be launching a groundbreaking new travel app, Open AI Travel, that simplifies trip planning and provides personalized recommendations based on user preferences. The OpenAI Travel app is powered by state-of-the-art AI technology and offers a seamless, intuitive user experience. Gagfair AI Travel app can provide you with tourism information as well. Of course, this is going to work in synergy with that travel agency one, the Beyond Blue or whatever they call it. They're going to synergize these two. They'll have an AI that can tell you anything you want to know about that vacation. Off the tip of its digital tongue, if you will, it'll be able to give you images and videos. I mean, just like that, you'll get everything you want and it'll stay on track and it'll know how to close you. So they're going to probably have both of these come together. That's going to be another stream of money. They are primarily working in Asia Pacific, but the CEO really has his eye over here because we book our flights differently. To us, this, this registration fee is all you risk is much more valuable and will be put to use more often over here than it is over there. So he is really excited to get over here. All right, that's everything I wanted to share from the textual side. Let's go take a look at the technical side now. Oh, you gotta love the weekends. Get to take your time making these videos, which explains why I'm in different clothes. It's a different day. This is what I call my camouflage outfit. How do you like it? <laughs> if it wasn't for the beard, I'd almost be invisible. We are now looking at New Momentum Corporation, ticker NNAX, and we're going to chart this bad boy on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We got this opened up to a three-year, one-week chart, which is actually the entire chart for this company. She came on the market July 5th of 2021. She had a low of 30 cents and a high of 90 cents that day, 300% jump, but that was about all she had to give. After that, she broke bad and broke down coming down real fast and hard to roughly two cents. And she was down here for more than a year. 15 months after she came on the market, we finally look at it. She was starting to take a run off of a dip. We caught some of this. I'm not quite sure how much, but she hit a high of nine cents. She came back down underneath her 50 day SMA and dribbled down to a low of triple zero four from nine cents. Now, this is all very strange and curious over here. There's our low bubble right in the middle of these two big swaths of volume. That bar right there, that is over a half a billion shares. What's strange here, though, is there is no news, no filings that I could find. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing out there, but I couldn't find anything. But what's even worse, all this volume coming into the picture barely made the price move. What's up with that? The other thing I notice about our three-year chart is we have got a 200-day SMA coming into the picture. Now, if you watch my videos on a regular basis, we talk about this happening. What normally occurs when a new SMA comes onto the board, the price, regardless if it's under or over that new SMA, will usually gravitate to it. We'll get sucked in. We'll run to it. Now, it doesn't always stay there. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it goes right back to what it was doing. But we normally see this happen on smaller time frame charts, like maybe the hour, 15 minute, five minute. I've never seen it happen on a three year chart. Oh boy, I wish it would. Oh God, I pray it would. Look folks, right now our price is just around double zero two and the 200 day SMA came in at over 22 cents. If my quick math is right, we're looking at roughly 200,000% gains if that was to happen. That would be a get-rich-quick surge, but I wouldn't sit around waiting for it. Not on the three-year chart. Let's come on down to our one-day, one-year chart. 
Oh, don't that look good? Everything is sweet here, folks. We've got a high of uh, 0035 and that low of 0004. But that is an atypical breakout chart. Now, don't go running over to Google looking that up. You're not going to find any information. I created that term. This chart is the type of pattern I look for all the time. And it's one of the most common I share with you. So rather than explain what it is over and over again, it just seemed prudent to give it a name. So I call it the atypical breakout chart. Now, once again, I will explain this to you because it's important. For an atypical breakout chart, you want your 200 day coming down fast and furious like a ski slope. And then you want it leveling off coming into the parking lot. While this is falling, your price is deep, deep underneath it. They start to get closer and closer together. Now you've got yourself an atypical breakout chart. We start looking for token signs that she's interested in climbing. One of those can be the bars start tapping the 200 over and over again, or you have bars shoot through the 200 and come back down. Those are the ones I really like. And we've got one right here, folks. And this is a beauty. This is a twofold sign, this bar and that bar. Everything is going sideways. We're floating above our 200 haul, which is excellent. I want to see that 200 haul just up underneath the price with our 200 SMA above it. I want my price in the middle. That's perfect. My haul is climbing. My 200 SMA is falling. Excellent. So we're going sideways, doing absolutely nothing to catch anybody's attention. And then we shoot up hard. We have this huge bar go up and through the 200 day SMA. Now this has to happen a particular way. There are two parts to this bar, the solid part and the wick. The solid part, I do not want to break through the 200. It can go up to it and touch it, but don't go through it. Then I want the wick to go through that 200 and as high as it possibly can, the higher, the better. After she has done that, I'm going to watch the next bar. Now, I normally do this on a four hour chart. We are on a daily chart, but you can see it's still working. The second bar, I'm watching it fall. And when it comes down, I want to see it come down no lower than where this surge started. If this comes up with a solid bar underneath the 200, spits a wick over the 200, then falls back down higher than where it started, I am putting this on my watch list. As far as I'm concerned, eight out of 10, this is going to run. It's looking for an opportunity to break out. What is that opportunity? It's a level 200 day SMA. When it goes flat, she is coming down slippery slope. She's broke through with our sign. And right here, she is starting to go flat right there. And she took off folks going from triple zero seven up to double zero two four. That is over 300% run right there, 350% almost. All of our SMAs have curved up and are starting to climb, getting ready to cross our 200 day SMA. When that happens, they call them golden crosses. You can kind of think of these as turbo power to the price. This can definitely help it push up strong. All of our oscillators are very, very strong. All of them are going to the moon right now. Now I did look at this. I wanted to point this out because this was a huge volume spike too. I couldn't find any reason for that one either. So out of the clear blue, this stock likes to bring in volume and sometimes she pops, sometimes she doesn't. Let's dive on down to the six month, four hour view. Wow. So our 200 day SMA came into the picture here, but nothing rushed to it, did it? She fell down. We had a break through, not a break out. She got over it and then fell right back down onto our 200 haul. Where did she start? Our low bubble is bouncing off of our 200 haul, which penny stocks really like. That's why it's my favorite SMA. Penny stocks like to use the 200 haul as a diving board, as a catapult to shoot to and through the 200 day SMA. So she was riding on that here. She bounced off of it. With some volatility, she's bouncing up to that 200, still too steep to try to break out. So it broke through and came right back down where to our 200 day haul, which is now way up here instead of down here. She's going sideways, tapping, tapping, tapping. We got a lot of tapping, don't we? She gets up on top and boom, she's off and running. You can see our volume is getting stronger now. 
picking up. All of our SMAs have turned and are on top of the 200-day SMA, and they're in the right order. You want the smallest on the top, 9, 20, 50, 200 haul, 200 MA. This is looking outstanding. And look at our oscillators. Houston, we have a successful launch. Every single one of them is going to the moon. If all of your oscillators are climbing, you're in a very good position. Let's come on down to that one hour, 20 day view. So she's going sideways. We had a nice bounce here. She was doing really nothing, just maintaining. Got up on top of her 20. That's a nice move. She didn't just bounce up and come back down to the 200. She's landed on her 20, climbing up, fell down to her 50, still not her 200. So it shows she is light. She is not trying to come down. She's trying to go up. And off of this uh, three days ago, we were at, well, four days now with the weekend. We went from 0007 up to that 0024. Nice, beautiful run. Floating on our nine-day SMA. We had a pullback here, but nothing touched the 20-day on this chart. And she started climbing. And look at our bars. Look at how big the bars are getting now. We had little tiny bars, medium-sized bars, and now these huge bars. And our volume was very strong on Friday. And look at our oscillators, right? Every single one of them is climbing and on fire. RSI is clear up there at 73 right now. Hold on. I just heard someone go, oh. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't like to get into a stock when the RSI is red, when it's in the overbought. Because overbought makes an inference that too much of it has been bought. That's not the case, folks. Fact of the matter is it can stay up there for a while. Look, this started just at the beginning of Friday. And all day Friday, it was in the red. You would have missed that run because you were afraid because it was in the overbought. Don't let it scare you, folks. It's one of the signs I look for. I like things on fire. I love heat. Coming on down to that five-day, five-minute, that's a beautiful chart. Low bubble in this corner, triple zero seven. High bubble there, double zero two four. She's been on a run up, floating on that 50 for the most part. She is on her nine, bouncing on the 20, falling to the 50, but not going a whole lot deeper. Took a crouch and pounce here, like a cat does. Go down just a couple inches to jump a couple feet. Well, this thing came just underneath the 50 to rip. Bam! She took off there from 001 all the way up to 0021. That was over 100% run right there. Sideways, kicked it up to another 40% on top of that. She has pulled back. She has come through her 200 haul, which just came into the picture. Boy, she ran to it too, right? I told you, our 200s are strong, powerful SMAs. And when a new SMA comes onto the board, the prices like to run to it. Well, what happened here? It came on right here, and that's when she started falling. Immediately, she went right to that 200. Laid on it for a while, then fell underneath the 50, rubber ball bounce, under the water and back up, or crouch and pounce like a cat, and she is off and running right now. This is looking good. She is bouncing in all the right places. 200-day SMA has just come into the picture. Please don't gravitate to this one. Stick to the 200 haul. Oscillators. She was falling. She bounced off of her line here. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, it is now climbing. Had the same situation with our MACD. RSI is tempted right now. She's just going sideways, but she's not cool. She's at 62. And then AX, she had a strong run. I don't know if she's still going to run. Uh, we need to see some more information. But the chart says she still has some heat left over. Looking at the news, looking at the filings, I'm not too sure about that. But of course, you may find out more information when you do more due diligence, right? We don't just count on mine. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.